There's things that change and there's things that stay the same. So we practice medicine the same way people on the outside practice medicine. And so as standard of care changes, we change the way we take care of our patients. And there are administrative changes that take place. And there are intricacies of the way we implement certain programs. But by and large, we take care of patients the way every, every doctor takes care of patients. And so you know, there are administrative changes. We might change from this electronic health record to that electronic health record, or we might change, you know, a program that we're using to administer profiles or whatever, but in the end, the medical care is still the medical care. Medivac is a huge topic, and so there's, there's Medivac, which is primarily done by the Army, so we don't do the going to the battlefield and picking up the patient and carrying them to the first hospital. That's actually the Army that's responsible for the te technically medevac, which is what you see on like Black Hawk Down or We Were Soldiers, where they're flying in on the helicopter and picking up the patient from the battle lines and taking them back. Where we in the Air Force get involved is, is transporting them from one medical facility to another medical facility. Um, so we'll be the docks in Bagram, Afghanistan, or in Balad Air Base in Iraq, where we're, you know, running the ICU and running the trauma center. And, you know, it, a lot of times it'll be a joint venture between the Army and the Air Force kind of managing or running those hospitals and running the codes and the, you know, the huge, you know, influx of patients all at once. It's slowed down a lot as the fighting has tapered off. But I mean, back, you know, five, ten years ago, we were the ones running those hospitals. And then our aircraft, Air Force, does AeroVac. So the difference between the AeroVac and the Medivac is picking them up on the battle lines versus taking them from one medical facility to another. But we've got critical care air transport teams that take care of ICU level patients and will transport them from you know, one hospital to another, whether it's transporting him from Balad to Germany, or be it from Germany to the U.S., and there are even patients who have been taken directly from, you know, a more forward location in Afghanistan all the way to the U.S. We've got teams that do just burn response for the patients that have just massive amount of burns and they'll activate them from San Antonio, fly them to Afghanistan, pick up a patient, put them in an ICU in the air and fly them back to the U.S. Um, it's really amazing. Our mortality rates are lower, were lower during the Iraq conflict than they ever were um, previously. Once a patient got to a hospital, a military hospital, the mortality rates were exceedingly low um, just because of changes in the way we were managing the care, but also changes in what we've done as far as providing soldiers and airmen with first aid kits that have tourniquets in them, you know, better body armor. There's a lot of things that we've done that have made it where we've saved way more lives than ever in the past. I think it's partially training and partially research. I mean, our you know, Army and Air Force docs, especially in San Antonio and the trauma centers in San Antonio, did a massive amount of research trying to figure out the best way to take care of these trauma patients. Um, you know, figuring out what was causing these people to die when they would show up in the trauma center and figuring out ways to try and prevent them from being as bad when they showed up at the trauma center. And then obviously figuring out what we needed to do to make it where we could have an ICU in the sky, you know, and that was a huge accomplishment because, you know, if you're in an ICU downtown, you don't transport to another hospital and we might pull you out of the hospital for an 18 hour flight, you know, if that's what it takes to get you from Afghanistan to the States. It depends on the airplane, but for the heavy 
aircraft, the transport aircraft carrying patients. You're going to have a pilot and a co-pilot, and sometimes, depending on the length of the flight, there will be even a third pilot so they can rotate for sleep cycles during the flight. And then, depending on the aircraft, there will be load masters, maybe a flight engineer um, to help figure out how to make sure that all the cargo or patients are loaded appropriately on the aircraft so it will be balanced properly. and um, make sure all that's done. And then as far as the AeroVac crew, you know, it consists of nurses and med techs. There's no docs that fly unless it's the CCAT, the ICU level patients. Those are the only times you have docs. And on those, you'll have a doc and a nurse and a tech just for the one patient because um, it's obviously an ICU. I mean, we'll be taking intubated patients that you know, or on, you know, pressers, even on the aircraft. So, you know, you, you'll have a doc flying with the patient um, individually. And then the amount of people that you're, the amount of air vac crew you're taking is really going to depend on how many patients you're transporting.